because my darlings, there is nothing in this world more powerful than a dreamer who's got a dream. You become an irresistible force. Have a shower 
on Saturday nights. It's the only one show we had. It was just in the high mountains. And it was sometimes minus 15 degrees, high mountains. And you still had cold showers every day. Except on Saturday night, you had a hot shower, and you've got a clean pair of khaki shirt and pants. And, and that was it. And then the next morning, these clean little boys walk the seven miles to the Dutch Reformed Church and they're all neat and tidy and clean and everybody would say, don't they look after them well in the orphanage? Those kids are always clean and sparkling and their clothes are always clean. And he told you got all week and you had cold showers from that moment on. And I can tell you, I can complete an entire shower in 13 seconds. <laughs> it's cold enough. Uh, and that includes washing myself. Um, <laughs> But in order to, to stoke the furnaces, the furnaces and get the hot water, we used to have to go to the bush and, and the little guys would have to gather the kindling and the big guys would, would chop the logs. And I'm the little guy and I'm gathering the kindling in there and some big kid has left his chopper in a log and he's gone for a piss or something. And forgive this vernacular, I'm a straight. I can't help it. You didn't start talking, okay? Um, and, and, he left the chopper in, in a log, and, and I'm a little guy, and I can't resist it. You know, take the chopper out and whack, whack, whack. You're seven. That's a big cut. Okay. I cut my finger off. It was dangling like this. And I go back to the hostel, and the matron says, "Drop your dax, drop your pants." She gives me a day's Chinese writing. <laughs> and she wraps it up in a dish towel. And she says, walk the seven miles to the doctor and have a picture paper. So this little guy, the blood is dripping down as I'm walking with a dish cloth around my fist. Finally, I get there. It's Saturday. All the pregnant women are down from the high mountains being checked out by the doctor. And I'm the kid from the orphan. Come off and you just wait for laps. That's, that's the rule. And so I can sit under a mango tree and wait. And at six o'clock, the doctor finds me unconscious under the mango tree. He picks me up and he takes me in. He gives me a transfusion. And he stitches up the finger. And an hour later, the phone rings and it, there's been a, a fight in the African location. And he's got to go and mend heads and things like that. He said, well, don't worry, he said, I'll call the orphanage and I'm going to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in the orphanage ever got picked up by anybody under any circumstances. So after he'd gone, I crawled out of his house, which was on stilts, like any of you just fair, the Queenslanders had these houses built on stilts. So, so and it, this looked through about this high end of his house, and so I crawled underneath it. And I'm too weak to walk, there's no way I can walk back to the, the orphanage. And I fall asleep and I wake up in the morning and the sun is streaming through the floorboards of the veranda. Uh, and I realize I've been lying against, I've been sitting against the sleep against a big box. Now in this town called the Devil's Canyon, that was its name. Um, we weren't allowed to speak English because I hated the English so much after the Anglo Boer War. I went for why that was. But, but, the Brits killed 27,000 women and children. They placed them in concentration camps and they died. Um, and the Boers, the Afrikaans people, would never forget them. And in the Devil's Canyon, they took in the bones of 5,000 5, kids, put them in a special cemetery. And that's why they hated the British. And I had a name called Courtney. That's why I was crazy. British name. I couldn't, I, I couldn't speak English. I just put it in three months. And um, I wake up and there's this big box. I open it up and it's a big box. And on top is the most beautiful book you'll ever see. It's, it's red Morocco leather. The tips of the, of the pages are gold. And there's a bit of green, very green on the leather, but I don't care about that. I open it up and it's not enough to go. where the doctor keeps his secret English books. We don't know how to read all the speaking issues. 